The White House is facing intense backlash for changing the transcript of President Biden's infamous garbage remark in what looks like an attempt to water down his major insult of Trump voters. Lucas Tomlinson is at the White House with the latest fallout. Lucas. Well, Kaylee, you don't want to upset the White House stenographers armed with their Harbrace handbooks. You think this official transcript of President Biden's comments on that Zoom call are just not accurate. Here was Pennsylvania Governor Josh Shapiro on special report last night with Brett Baer. I do think folks understand this is a race between Kamala Harris and Donald Trump. I don't know that they're focused on things Trump surrogates say or anyone associated with the vice president says. They're focused on the words coming out of both of their mouths. Now, here was Shapiro just hours after Biden's comments. I would never um, insult the good people of Pennsylvania or, or, or any Americans, even if they chose to support a candidate uh, that I didn't support. Now, here's the official transcript showing the world's most famous apostrophe on the word supporters from Biden's Zoom call while his vice president was speaking on the ellipse not far away. It was released without the approval of the stenographers who are not political appointees. Earlier, House Republicans voicing their displeasure, writing the following White House letter, quote, President Biden's vindictive words were unsurprising given his previous statements regarding people who chose not to vote for his preferred candidate. Unsurprising, too, were the White House's actions after he said them. And here was Vice President Harris last night. I strongly disagree with any criticism of people based on who they vote for. And I intend to be a president for all Americans, and including those who may not vote for me in this election. Now, President Biden has not spoken to the press in person about these comments earlier this week. Perhaps we'll have the opportunity when he heads to Marine One this afternoon in a few hours, Kaylee. Lucas, thank you. Look, this is a scandal. It's one filled with hubris. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. one filled with arrogance. It's one filled with entitlement because you have White House political staff railroading career government officials in a way that is overtly political. I want to put up the two transcripts. And the first, you will see the stenographer. The second, beside it, you will see the White House's version. And you see how it's been changed. Supporters made possessive to intimate that President Biden was not calling supporters, plural, garbage. Look, Charlie, transcripts are meant to verify the truth, not amplify political mm -hmm. messaging. The stenographer's transcript verifies the truth. The one that the press office presumably altered is intent to amplify political messaging. That's such a great point. Um, and I think it also uh, underscores how bad they think this is. Mm -hmm. The fact that they're willing mm -hmm. to try to, to fix this or or lie about this means that they're very concerned about it. Um, I also think it's uh, kind of interesting that this seems to be the one thing the White House is able to fix. Uh, meanwhile, all these bad things are going on in the country, but we're going to fix this apostrophe wow. and get this straight. Um, but also remember, this is the, you know, uh, you know the problem here deals with uh, the National Archives mm -hmm. and the record that goes to the National Archives. Yep. And I just think it's kind of interesting to, to think back. It was five minutes ago, Democrats were trying to put Donald Trump in jail over records dealing with <laughs> the National Archives. Yep. <laughs> and so all of this is, uh, it, it is silly season. Uh, they are very concerned about it. They're desperate. Um, and, but I, uh, again, you know, I, I look at, you know, Obviously, I don't know that Joe Biden has any idea what he said or what he was trying to say. He, what, you know, whatever. But again, you look at the record. You look at their uh, performance in office. And when you leave a, a border wide open and you have inflation like we've seen, that's treating people like garbage. It is. And the stenographer sent a letter to the press and communications office per the AP. They reviewed the letter. And I want to put up part of it. Here you will see the stenographer say this about a breach of trust and protocol. The supervisor in an email called the press's office handling of the matter, quote, a breach of protocol and spoilation of transcript integrity between the stenography and press offices. You know, Harris, during my tenure, I treated the transcript as truth. For instance, a reporter was accused of calling me a very, very vile epithet. We couldn't quite Ew. hear it. I remember going to the stenographer, not to change a transcript, but to say, mm. what did you hear? What was the fact? What was the truth? Is this something we need to call out or not? And the stenographer did that. You don't change the record, but this is what the White House did. And will right. the press call for accountability? But I got to tell you, there's a lot of problem going on here. And I, I'm, I'm starting to get what Charlie's putting down. Why are they paying so much attention to this? Mm. So um, our team 
got a screenshot of the rebuke from the steno office to the press office sent yesterday at 1 10 p.m. So this has been cooking for almost 24 hours yeah. out of our view. Um, so this email from the steno director suggests that the version of the transcript released by the press office may not be the final version uh, that is sent to the National Archives. You just pointed that out. So here it is. After last night's process, our team would like to reiterate that rush drafts, excerpts the stenography office sends to assist the press office are not intended for public distribution or as the final version of the transcript. Please avoid sharing rush drafts and excerpts, which are subject to review and might create confusion among staff media. What, what's going on there? Yeah. Yeah, I, I want to know, what, what is the message with that? Like, if you guys are going to clean up your problems, you got to do it outside the public view, and then we all release one together. So, mm -hmm. so everybody's okay with changing it? Because I'm not okay with changing it. Like, why are we changing the official record? Mm. Exactly to your point, Harris, Emily, is, and you intimated this as well, the National Archives, right? So there's an official draft sent to the National Ar Archives from the stenographer, and in the letter that was referenced, as Harris noted, in the specific language was our stenography office transcript released to our distro, that's a distribution list, which includes the National Archives, is now different mm -hmm. than the version edited and released to the public by the press office. So history has one version, and the American public, Emily, days before in a election has something that is disinformation, misinformation. They love those terms. And that's why it's a scandal, Kaylee. And so do not listen to anyone on the left saying, oh, it's no big deal. It's an apostrophe. What's the difference? The difference is a massive matter of integrity and for the preservation of historical records. Look, in court, there's hopefully you guys have never had to be in a court proceeding. There is a reason why if you ever have a nonverbal response, the stenographer says, excuse me, sir, we need it verbal. You need to say yes, you do not nod, because there needs to be an unalienable record of the events right. that occurred for years to come for history. And this, to me, totally plays out the fact that the, mm. the lengths that the office will go to to absolutely destroy the integrity of history. That one moment in time matters more than the longevity of this sacred country's actual history. And this right there, we're seeing it. And the fact that the stenographer's office said, no, 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 not on my watch, also goes to show the seriousness with, seriousness with which these individuals take their jobs and their roles in history to oh, preserve boy. the record. And by the way, last time I checked, wasn't accuracy of a transcript, wasn't the transcript the heart of a certain impeachment proceeding that occurred. Hmm. There so you there go. you go. If that was the end all be all, then this putting in an apostrophe, we all know the book, the, the panda eats shoes, shoot, shoots and leaves, right? We all, that, with a grammar book, the comma, that's yeah. a whole different thing than if you have it away. So that's a really important distinction that they clearly, they clearly grasp. Tommy, you know, before the Associated Press came out with this explosive report last night, James Comer and Elise Stefanik were all over this. So they sent a letter to White House Counsel Office, talk about being ahead of the ball game, that said this, the move is not only craven, but it also appears to be in violation of federal law, including the Presidential Records Act. White House staff cannot rewrite the words of the President of the United States to be more politically on message. We write to demand the White House retain and preserve all documents and internal communications regarding by statement and the release of the inaccurate transcript. We also demand the White House issue a corrected transcript. Preserve your documents, KJP comms office, Tommy. <laughs> you know, I think it's great that we're trying to get transparency on this issue, and it is a scandal, and we need to pay attention to it. But I would think that Biden's staff, they're getting so tired of cleaning up for this man. I mean, whether mm. it was we're not going to release the, the video of the her testimony, okay, again, a transcript issue, uh, the cheap fakes, deep fakes, when we saw Biden wandering off or pausing on a stage, we were told that was a cheap fake or a deep fake. We were taking it out of context. Again, we were not. And now you have the garbage comments. And let's not forget the, the number of times that they've intervened, sent questions ahead of time to that Philadelphia radio station. These are the questions he's to be asked after the debate. A person lost their job because of that. This is over and over again cleaning up for Biden. But the person who really needs to clean up for Biden, it's not the White House. It's not the stenographer. It's Kamala Harris. Because, again, this is going to, and she doesn't think it will, this is going to impact her campaign. She needs to address the issue head on, not just the garbage comments and denouncing them, but Joe Biden is your boss. You've apparently been the
the last person in the room with him for the last four years. He keeps messing up. He is now actively offending a voter base. You need to answer for this because you have been a part of this. You are singing off the same sheet of music as Biden has said. So you need to answer for your boss and you cannot run away from it. She yeah. tried with yep. the gaggle. Right. She tried. And it, this depends on a ferocious roar from the press demanding answers. And I will not hold my breath for that, but we can only hope. <laughs> Hey everyone, I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.